Welcome back to the SSL Family Dad channel. Today we're going to talk about our chicken flock and what we're doing for this year. All right, so we're out here with the suburban chicken coop, the chicken coop that we made back when we lived in the, uh, the little suburban homestead. Uh, most of you guys have seen this because many of you started following along with our channel when we built this chicken coop many years ago. But this coop has been doing really well. It has uh, held up really well. Nothing has rotted. It hasn't leaked at all. Um, the clean out tray still works really good, uh, even though it got really wet this year because I had all the uh, baby chicks in there in the uh, smart brooder that we set up out here for those. But uh, we've cleaned it all out. We've got the, the new bedding in there and new nesting material and all that good stuff in there. And it is time to make some changes around here. We have been living on, uh, let's just call it catch-up mode. Ever since we moved in here, we had uh, our little uh, flock of six chickens or five chickens, I think at the time, that were living out here. And then somebody gave us like 30 or 40 chickens. And so we were in a rush to build a coop and, and set stuff up out in our pole barn. So we, we built the, the pole barn chicken coop, which was basically just a horse stall that we turned into a chicken coop. But that has caused all kinds of issues. Having chickens in the barnyard with the pigs and with the goats when they're given birth, they get out of the, uh, they get into the barnyard, they get in through the other stalls, then they fly over, then they get in the barn, then they lay eggs in the hay and the eggs break all over the place and they get out and they're wandering around the yard and they're pooping all over the place and they're making a mess. I put a wire to keep them in. I'm putting this up here. I'm putting this up here. I'm trying to keep the pigs, baby pigs out of the chicken coop because they go in the chicken coop and the chickens just don't belong in the barn. They don't belong in the barnyard and they need their own place. And so we're gonna be making some changes this year. So first thing we have to do is separate out the chickens that we want to keep. We're, we've bred out a lot of chickens uh, throughout the winter time and late fall last year. And so we're gonna keep our youngest barred rocks and Johnny, the uh, famous barred rock rooster. We've had him for, uh, I guess it's been almost two years now or, some, or something like that, a year and a half. And he's been a great rooster. So we're gonna keep Johnny, our, our barred rock rooster, and then I'm gonna select the six best hens that I have, the youngest hens, and I may even mix it up a little bit and throw some other breeds in there. So let's select out the chickens that we want to keep, and then I'm going to go through a few ideas and plans that I have to uh, restart and reset our, our chicken operation here and make it a little bit better. I've had to put up wire here to try to keep the chickens from flying over the stall door. I've had to put up wire out there to try to keep them out into the, into the barnyard. That's a broody hen. You be nice. Be nice. The chicken coop is a mess, and that's one of the reasons I hate this coop. It's hard to clean out. I'm gonna design something completely different, but we've got, look at all these roosters in here. Oh, these barred rock roosters. So there's one, two, three, four roosters right there at least. Um, and then we've got Johnny up on the, up on the roost there. Uh, I see we've got a few hens that look younger here. So possibly that one and uh, behind this giant uh, monster that we got from uh, Murray McMurray Hatchery. Uh, we'll get that one. And we might grab one of these guys, this one, and that one I may keep, and then four barred rocks. So let's see if I have four young hens that we can keep in here. Johnny is a good, good rooster. Nice, big, heavy. It's great for breeding for us. This is one of our younger hens. I don't know if she came from the Murray McMurray hatchery. I think this might have been one of the youngest ones that we just hatched out. So um, she looks like a nice, healthy bird, and she's the friendliest chicken that we have. She actually, as soon as I walk in there, she just runs right up to me. So 
Aww. and she'll probably produce some good, some good, uh, good chickens for us. So this one is a buff Orpington. The reason I want to keep her is because when we do start breeding again uh, later on this year, uh, I actually want to experiment with just letting her uh, sit on the eggs. So these uh, hens are known to go what's called broody, which means that they'll sit on a nest of eggs and actually hatch them out. Um, most of your modern day chickens, Isa Browns and even Bird Rocks and a lot of those other ones, that trait has been kind of bred out of them and they, they won't raise their own young on their own. But uh, these Buff Orpingtons will. And you can tell a lot of times she'll sit on a nest of eggs for <laughs> for quite a long time and she'll peck at you if you try to get in there and get them out of her, out from under her. But, uh, but real healthy good looking hen here so we'll, we'll keep her. And we'll grab the rest will be Bard Rock. So, We've uh, really like to keep and breed these barred rocks. They're a, a good dual purpose bird, so they are great for meat. Uh, we, we harvest them for meat uh, before they get too old, and uh, they're great egg layers, and they're good in the hard winters here in Michigan. So uh, barred rocks are just kind of a good all-around all -around bird. Well, I grabbed seven hens. So we have seven hens plus, plus Johnny. I just, uh, just couldn't resist. Eight's a good round number, so we have a total of eight chickens in here. Uh, this is a pretty good size area. It's a 30 by 40 um, pen uh, or run, whatever you want to call it. And this will get all nice and grown up. They get quite a bit of their food with eight chickens in here. They'll, they'll get quite a bit of their food from this, uh, this little area. Um, I can also let them free range around the yard a little bit now that I just have eight. And uh, they can kind of come out and, and hang out here. So, And I've got the nice automatic feeder in here. So I can fill this thing up and it lasts uh, you know, about five days um, with this many chickens. Uh, without having to refill it. So like for vacations and things like that, this will be easier. We'd like to try to take a vacation some uh, someday. And we also have the uh, Farmer Brad um, automatic watering system that I can hook back up to the hose now. Uh, I'll actually, he's uh, got these available on a site and I'll actually uh, put a link in the description to these. These, uh, these watering systems are great. So this one's an automatic fill. You just hook it up to a hose. It's got a little float valve inside. It's got the four you know, chicken drippers on the outside there. Um, and these things just, just work great. So I just hook a hose up here. I let it sit out here all summer and it's hooked up and uh, I don't have to worry about giving these guys water. So the chickens are enjoying their new home. Lots of good new fresh ground to scratch around in and, and search for food. So uh, this should be, should be a nice place for them. So for those of you guys who are new or maybe looking to get chickens this year, the uh, Suburban Chicken Coop, I do have free plans on our website, sslfamilyfarm.com, and you can uh, download the plans and, and build this coop. Uh, I made a few adjustments to the plans. A few things are a little different, so the nesting boxes are a little bit higher, which is a, a better idea, so you can clean them out right into the clean-out tray easier. And then the clean-out tray, of course, right under here, uh, as you saw, it just pulls right out, and you can go dump that in your compost pile or whatever. and and pop it back in and fill it back up with fresh bedding and, and it takes you know maybe 15 20 minutes to clean it out so it's real nice and the roost right there holds about eight chickens uh, we had six in here a little more comfortable and it's got three nesting boxes which is actually overkill we probably only need two but um, real nice coop and uh, so far it's lasted quite a few years nesting boxes the excess uh, right over here and just uh, open them up and grab your eggs out and of course you can hook it up to any size run that you want but the plans do have a a four foot by eight foot run that you can use uh, with with this uh, with this design that for a smaller yard or whatever works uh, works really good. All right, so we have our our eight chickens, seven laying hens, and a rooster separated out, and so that's really all we need for our own consumption. If we get six or seven eggs a day, that's plenty. Uh, throughout the winter time, we might get less than that, but uh, that's still plenty for us. Uh, we're not in the business of really selling eggs or, or selling meat chickens or anything like that right now. Uh, right now we're just for our own consumption kind of thing. So the next thing I'm going to do is we're going to take those chickens in that are left. I've got 15 chickens left and we're going to take those in and get those processed. Uh, so those will all be meat for us and I'm going to clear out that stall and redo that. I'll probably do some videos on that. I'm going to make that a little goat birthing uh, stall or pig stall or something else so that I can use the, the barn for the livestock instead of the chickens. But we're not done with chickens, of course. We've got, uh, we've got lots more plans to have chickens. So I've got a couple options to, uh, to talk about. I'll show you one of my plans that uh, I've been thinking about. And I don't know if I'll be able to get to this this year or not, um, but maybe it'll be a winter project or uh, early spring next year. So this is, as you can see, all the goats are out here. This is our, our larger pasture. 
And right out here in the middle of this big pasture is that hill out there. You can kind of see it. And one of my, my thoughts was, why not build a nice big chicken coop? I can level that out, build a nice big chicken coop right on the top of that. And then I can fence out an aisle right out to it so that I can drive a golf cart or tractor out to it or whatever. And then I could design the chicken coop so that it could uh, I could open up a door and let all the chickens into this pasture for a while. Um, I could open up a different door and let them into another pasture. We'll open up another door and let them into another pasture. And so the chickens would then have kind of free range out in this large area with the, the other animals. So they could go and scratch through all the manures and low spots and they could you know, get uh, the majority of all of their food and I could rotate them through pastures uh, wherever they're needed. And uh, so that was one thought, uh, kind of a more sustainable approach. I could get you know at least 50 chickens out here easily and they'd have lots of room to free range and and get a lot of their nutrition from, from pasture instead of me feeding them. And uh, it's better for them anyway. And the other option was uh, a field operation. So let me take you out into the hay fields here and see if we can think of something and be more of a, a production or commercial operation out here. So here we have these nice, long, large hay fields. And I thought I could do something like a chicken tractors, uh, you know, all these things you see, Joel Salton does kind of a, a, a nice operation with that. And a lot of these other guys you see on YouTube that do uh, pasture, poultry, and they'll do meat chickens, they'll do layers, and they'll just, you know, create some kind of a big chicken tractor and then, you know, drag it back and forth across the field or something like that. Now that would probably destroy hay, so I'm not sure I could do that in our hay fields, but I could sacrifice some areas along the edges and maybe pull it around the whole perimeter of the hay field. Uh, that wouldn't be too bad. Uh, I could also clear out some space back here where the pumpkin patch was and other things in the woods and maybe make some pasture space back there where I could uh, you know, move a chicken tractor around or use poultry netting or something like that. So this would be more of a mobile operation and the idea out there in the pasture on the hill would be more of a permit operation so I could just leave it there. Now, personally, I'm leaning more towards the permanent chicken coop for a couple of reasons. I, I'm not a fan of chicken tractors. They're a great idea. They've taken YouTube by storm over the last five years. You know, it's, it's been even longer than that maybe, but you know, Joel Salatin did it and, and everybody wants to do chicken tractors. I think that's great. I think there's a, there's really is, if, if you have an open field, the open pasture you can use and, and you have time to go out there every single day and move something around, that's fine. And, and I have time to do that. I could do that here, but you do have to move it around all the time. And in the winter time, eh, you can't really move it around here in Michigan because we've got a bunch of snow on the ground and it would have to just sit somewhere anyway. Uh, for, gosh, you know, seven, maybe six months out of the year, it's just gonna sit in one place. So maybe down south, that would be more of a, a, a feasible idea, but I'm thinking more along the lines of a pasture rotation operation where I can rotate the chickens around in, in, in different pastures rather than uh, uh, moving something around all the time. I wanna reduce the amount of time I spend caring for animals every day. So the easier I can make things and the less time I spend taking care of animals every day is better because then I can use that time to do other things and improve things and make things better. So those are kind of my two ideas, but uh, we'll see, we'll see what happens. It's gonna take, take some planning and some time to get some pasture set up. And of course I need to build a new coop. So I need to start designing some things. Well, the chickens are happily out here. Oh, finding worms and things under all the leaves from last year. The leaves fall from these maple trees and they make a nice thick layer of fluffy soil that they can dig through. Lots of worms coming in there. They're already happier, I can tell. So we have had anywhere from over 50 chickens at, at some points uh, in, our, in our two years here on this farm uh, down to, you know, 25 or 30, like what we're at right now. And we've experimented with all kinds of different things and we've really found a good system for raising chickens uh, on a small farm or homestead. And uh, I've talked about this in other videos. I'll put links to that stuff in the, in the, in the, uh, the little eye up there in the corner. But it's time for us to have a reset. And this year we're gonna just reset this operation and really spend some time planning it out and you know on our timetable instead of you know people giving us chickens and things like that which has been great you know getting a bunch of free chickens that are ready to lay but now uh, that has been a challenge for us too they haven't been the breeds that we've really wanted uh, a lot of them have been older and so they stopped laying and we're just you know feeding them all the time uh, chicken feed ha you know is an expense and we, we spend quite a bit on, on chicken feed every month for, for 30 chickens uh, so this is much more manageable for us a good amount of eggs for us and this will give us time to plan things out and uh, take you guys along and, and hopefully create a, an operation and a system that i can share with you guys that we'll we're proud of and uh, uh you know i th this operation here in the barn i'm not proud of this this is a mess 
and I'd like to, to make something a little nicer and take some time. So, man, down to eight chickens. It's gonna, it's gonna feel weird here. Uh, I've got another week or two to go before I'll take those in and get them processed, but uh, let me know your thoughts on the uh, chicken raising system. If you've done chickens on a sustainable, larger scale, let me know. Um, I don't wanna get into these, uh, these meat birds where you just raise up 50, 60 meat birds and they all fall over, they can't even walk right and stuff like that and you feed them a bunch of grains and, and then you, know, you, you take them in and get them processed. I don't wanna get into that. I wanna do something that is uh, sustainable and, and natural as possible. I want these chickens to, to, to be out in an environment that is natural to them, which is, which is pasture, forest, field, you know, whatever. Don't forget to hit thumbs up. If you can hit it twice, hit it. no, you can't hit it twice. You'll, you'll take your thumbs up away if you do that. Don't do that. Just hit it once, just one time, thumbs up uh, for me. I always appreciate that. Subscribe if this is your first time to the SSL Family Dad channel. Uh, I'd love to have you guys tag along, of course. Time to get those baby chicks. So if you're looking to get into chickens, now's the time. April, it's spring. Lots of baby chicks up there at TSC and in the farm stores uh, chirping away. So as always, guys, thanks for watching. Have a good one. Mm -hmm.